The secret to getting into medical school with low MCAT. Hey, BMO Nation, welcome to another episode of our One Question Podcast. My name is Ronza and I'm joined by Meng. Hey, everyone. Now, we have nothing to sell you. It's just pure strategies and tips so that everyone has equal access to education, of course. Now, in case you've never watched or listened to one of these before, they are completely unscripted. There's no fancy visual audio effects of that nature. It's just pure content. We have 10 minutes to tackle a new topic each week. And this week's topic is the secret to getting into medical school with low MCAT. All right, the timer is on, Meng. Um, Now, I know that most of the viewers or listeners right now are probably puzzled as to how we could even (laughs) talk about this. Is this even possible? Well, first and foremost, yes, it is possible. There's many different components that medical schools are looking into, are reviewing when you are submitting everything. Uh, So you do want to put your best foot forward, but there are going to be cases where individuals have areas that they are, um, they're not, uh, I guess, as competitive in, and one of them being the MCAT. Now, outside of the MCAT, this is still a very preliminary step to applying for medical school. Meng, what's the next thing that students need to consider? I know we're going to tackle all the other components and, and, and essentially the secret to getting in is acing those other ones to make Mm -hmm. up for that low MCAT, but what's the next step after the MCAT that really students need to pay attention to? Um, Well, when it comes to getting into a school uh, with a low MCAT, I think the first thing you wanna consider is what schools you're even applying to. Um, That can be a really, really critical step in ensuring that your chances are maximized, right? There are schools that only accept candidates with extremely high MCAT scores. Uh, You probably don't wanna be going for those. You wanna be looking for schools that, um, that do have a range in terms of the MCAT scores that they accept that yours, your score falls into, right? So you can you can go online, do some research, look at different schools and what range of MCAT scores they accept and look for schools that um, would be accepting of your score. Now, school selection is very critical and something that we help our students with a lot. And that's precisely because it's uh, something that students uh, tend to do very quick without putting as mm-hmm. much uh, effort into it, which tends to be, it's bizarre to think about it because at the end of the day, this is what you're setting into place because when it comes to the applications, when it comes to everything, uh, you know, this is, this is where it started. So if you're overstretching yourself, yes, we always suggest to apply um, to a healthy amount of schools, but if you're, if you're really applying to schools or programs that you don't care to, and now comes the applications, you have to prepare for it, Think about it. The time that you're putting into those programs that you never really wanted to, uh, you know, apply to, is uh, is eating up that time for the schools that you really want to apply to, which thus can yeah. you can you know hurt and compromise the quality, make you rush and hurt your chances overall. So this strategy of selecting schools that are, uh, you know, within the realm, like you can have those overreaching schools. You know, don't don't go crazy with going with too many schools that. Are out of reach, but really hone into, do I hit the requirements? Do I yeah. meet uh, the mean or the median in terms of yeah. uh, the GPA? But also like, do I match their cultural fit? Like if they're asking for yeah. people that want research because that's what they're promoting. And I honestly don't have research. I don't care for research. Why would you apply to that program? Right? So great exactly. point, Meg. Um, outside of school selection, right? What's What's another, a big component, I guess we could say that students um, and candidates are at that point really organizing and really need to consider to help them get into medical school, regardless of a low MCAT score? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, outside of your MCAT score, we're talking about things that are non-academic, right? So um, your application the written application is a place where you want to be showcasing your non-academic skills, your motivations for pursuing medical school. And um, that's a place where you can actually set yourself apart from the pool of candidates, despite having a slightly lower MCAT score. Um, If your motivations are extremely strong and genuine and you have great experiences to back that up, if you have amazing Um, interpersonal skills, um, professionalism, um, other competencies that schools are really looking for in their candidates, and you have experiences to back those up, then 
having a strong written application is going to you know really put you in that next level um, when it comes to getting getting an interview getting past that application stage absolutely and i think we have some time here to even break down some of those components within the application stage and really clarify for those of you that might be confused about this logic i mean it's really quite simple right uh, if your G if your GPA is uh, even if it's at an average standing, uh, and you are really putting your best foot forward and demonstrating those interpersonal skills that they value and look for in your application, you know this essentially gives admissions a good idea of who you are holistically, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the MCAT, it's just one component, and you are going to be studying, you're going to be learning everything in medical school to begin with, but they really want to see what type of physician you're going to be in the future. And there are different ways that they assess that outside of just, you know, the MCAT, which is focusing on kind of knowledge of it. Uh, in terms of the application, you have that personal statement, you have that sketch, and you also have uh, letters of references. And Meng, I do want to emphasize this because a lot of times this is overlooked by applicants. What are things that uh, they need to consider to ensure that you know, they have a strong application to overcompensate in areas that they're limited in. Um, in terms of the letters of recommendation? Correct. Well, okay, yeah. So uh, obviously make sure you, before you get to your application stage, you are making strong connections with the people that you're interacting with, your professors, your TAs even, um, and anyone who's supervising your work outside of um, of. Uh, your courses and uh, and when it comes to asking them for the or for the letters of reference you want to make sure you give them plenty of time to to craft a strong letter for you and you want to make sure that when you select people to ask you want to make sure that these are people who know you extremely well who have worked with you over a longer period of time who can back up what you say about yourself about your motivations about your competencies with their own examples from your working relationship with them. Wonderful. And I want to emphasize again, we have seen this, you guys, it is feasible. It is very much possible for students to get into um, their dream school with either a low MCAT score or low GPA score. And that's precisely because they're um, they've really focused on all those other areas and they've ensured that they've strengthened them and demonstrated like an overall great application. Now, there are different areas to also demonstrate that we have a CASPER test that some programs uh, require and then we have an interview. So we have about two minutes and a half here to discuss those, Mang. In terms of the CASPER test, very quickly, how can students assist to overcompensate for other areas uh, that they're potentially worried about? Yeah, um, well, we can actually talk about the two of them together because the strategies are very similar. Um, they both require you to be familiar with the format, right? They're, you can think of them both as kind of assessments, things you have to pass, and, and there, there are requirements that are associated with both. So knowing the types of questions that you might be presented with in both the CASPER and in an interview, knowing the format of the CASPER, knowing the format of the interview, these are all things that you should take into consideration as you prepare for them. Giving yourself enough time to prep for each of those is also very important. And simulating the real experience that you will have at the time when you arrive at the CASPER test or when you arrive at your interview is going to be extremely important important as well. Um, and something that students often forget about is to make sure they have stress management strategies, make sure they are paying attention to their nonverbal cues, such as their body language, their the amount of eye contact they make, getting rid of those filler words, all, all kinds of things like that will help to make you, uh, will help your performance on the interview and on the CASPER as well, because you will also be doing video recorded responses on the CASPER. Absolutely. And I guess when, if we could sum that up, when it comes to, uh, you know, having that low MCAT, as long as you can pivot to strategize on what schools that are appropriate for you uh, to apply to and really make sure that you do your research, when it comes to that application component, starting early, looking at all the other components, making those connections to get those strong reference letters. When it comes to these uh, testing, whether it be CASPER, whether it be interviews, and you're getting tested in different areas, scenarios, and 
you really want to make sure that you're familiar with the structure, but ensure, as we say here, that there's perfect practice, right? Uh, perfect practice makes perfect. Have the right simulation as closely as possible. Time yourself in these settings, you know, deliver, dress the part when you need to, and ensure that you get feedback in the end to see where, what areas you can strengthen and, and what areas are great that you can continue ensuring that you deliver that way. And that's actually time. So uh, that's our secret. And there's lots of secrets, I guess you could see in that aspect. There's a lot of different mm -hmm. ways you can strengthen. So um, don't be stressed out and ensure that you know you have a game plan. So thank you so much for watching or listening. Now, if you like this as much as we enjoyed making it for you, you can go ahead and share it with a friend, subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. And of course, ask questions that you have in the comment section. See you next time. Bye, everyone.